Without any of the leaves or the seeds in the branches, it can be tough to tell which tree is which. To an untrained eye, all the bark just looks the same. Grayish, brownish, and kind of gnarly. Identifying trees not only has useful bushcraft purposes, but it also helps you to appreciate nature more. Let's start with one of the more distinct trees in this forest, the beech. I've mentioned this in the show before, but you can clearly identify it because of the smooth, thin bark. Some other identifying factors in winter include the leaves and the buds. If you take a look, it's got these long cigar-shaped buds. And of course, the leaves are brilliant in the winter. Another common tree is this, the maple, sugar maple. Now this is a young one, so the bark still looks fairly smooth, but one of the things that I look for are these sort of eyes in the bark, these horizontal striations. But one of the key giveaways is if you look up, the branches are opposite branching. What that means is that rather than alternating like a lot of trees do, the branches come out in the same area on sticks. In Ohio, we have a saying called Mad Buck, and that stands for Maple, Ash, Dogwood, Buckeye. These are four types of trees in Ohio that are opposite branching. In winter, checking to see if the branches are opposite or alternate can really help to distinguish trees that look very similar. Now this here is another maple. Even though the bark looks really different, it's the same species, Acer saccharum. Now, this bark does look a lot like some other trees. What comes to mind is honey locust and shagbark hickory. But honey locust has very similar bark with these sort of flaky plates coming off of it. But, again, you can check if it's opposite or alternate. And if it's alternate, it's most likely honey locust. Also, if you've got a brand of honey locust that isn't domesticated, wild honey locust, there's going to be lots of thorns coming out of the, the trunk. As for uh, shagbark hickory, it does have a very similar gnarly sort of texture, but the bark is more in these strips. They kind of look like beef jerky. We'll take a look at one later. I wouldn't really call it a tree, but I might as well point this out as well. This is spice bush, another thing you've seen in some of the shows. And in the winter, without any of its distinctive leaves, what gives it away are these berries. And of course, you can always do a check before you use it for tea or flavoring. You just peel the bark, and it has a very fragrant, sort of sweet smell. It's great. This tree is an ash tree. There's a lot of clues that give it away. With the bark, you'll notice that it has these sort of crisscrossing diamond patterns. Sort of like a lot of X's or diamonds just all along it. It's subtle, but that's one of the characteristics of ash. And also, again, if you look up, very distinctive opposite branches. But there's actually another clue specific to Ohio that gave this away. If you look around carefully, there's these small holes all around it, and there's actually signs of the bark peeling off. And uh, in Ohio and other areas around here, we've had problems with the emerald ash borer, which has pretty much wiped out most of the ashes. So whenever you walk around, some of the more delicate branches up there aren't, are gonna be missing because they've fallen off. The bark will likely be peeling off, and you'll see lots of little holes. It's a bit tough to get to, this one, but uh, this here is a black cherry, and it's got really distinctive bark. It's got these very uh, cornflake sort of texture, 
It looks like someone just spray painted cornflakes brown and then pasted it to a tree. When you look at it from afar, it generally stands out as a very dark tree against all the other ones. So it's, it's pretty easy to spot. <clears throat> Can you guess what this is? It's not black snow, and it's not charred leaves either. It's actually a fungus called Scoria spongiosa. Now in, in the spring and the summer, you'll see a lot of these little dancing white fluffy things on these beech trees. And what those are are woolly aphids. And they feed off of the sap in the tree and they excrete a sweet honeydew. And this fungus attaches specifically to that excrement and grows on these beaches. Luckily I don't think it does any real harm to the tree, so it's just an interesting sight. This is a big tree. I've seen a lot of big beaches in this forest around here and it, it kind of makes me wonder if there used to be a farm here or something. You know, maybe this was all field, save for a few beech trees that ended up becoming these huge ones once this reclaimed itself as a forest. It's interesting. Now this one here looks to me like hop hornbeam. It's called that because its seeds are arranged like a, almost like grapes, but they're flat. They look like hops that you use in beer, basically. Now the bark has these very, very distinct striations on it that just run all along the bark. And while they have these distinct striations, the bark is very two-dimensional. In other words, it's flat. There's not ridges that jut out like some of the other trees. Now, at a glance, this bark might resemble white oak or silver maple, but those are more three-dimensional, di and they usually don't look like this on trees this small. It also sort of resembles elm, but once again, elm is more three-dimensional. And uh, what it looks like the most to me is honeysuckle, which is an invasive plant. But honeysuckle, you can tell, is uh, not this, because honeysuckle have bent branches with more and more bent branches coming out of it. That and its opposite branching. So these are wild grapevines. And they've got a lot of uses. One of which is swinging around like a monkey. But they actually also produce edible grapes. They're very delicious. They come out usually in the late summer. Um, don't, don't get them confused with poison ivy though. That'd be bad. is undoubtedly one of Austin Powers' favorite trees, the shagbark hickory. You can see where it gets the name. And as we said earlier, they've got these things of bark that look a lot like beef jerky or something. They don't taste like it though. Now, this tree can actually be used for making bows. There's, it's one of many that can be made into a bow. I've said that before, but I would reckon that this is a pretty good tree because it's pretty straight all around. If you wanted to, you could probably make lots of bows from this. Now this tree here is an elm. And at first it's kind of hard to tell what it is. It's got these very long striations, similar to the hop horn beam, or maybe to a young ash. It looks a lot like a young ash. Now, what I look for is the sort of three-dimensional characteristic it has. 
when you look closely at the bark, it looks like different layers of two-dimensional things have been stacked on top of each other. I don't know how exactly to describe it, but it's almost like terraces in the bark. Now, another way to tell this bark from other barks is if you press on it. It's very soft like styrofoam. An ash tree or something else will not uh, will not be this soft. Elm, the bark, is great for cordage and stuff because it's very flexible. And it can also be used to make bows. And actually my first bow was an elm bow. I actually used a tree, it was straighter than this obviously, but it was actually thinner. But I tried making a second with very similar thickness and that didn't work because that was a tree that had grown a lot in a few years. So there were less growth rings and it was less structurally stable. But it's a fantastic, fantastic wood for bows. Now this here is an oak tree. To be honest, I'm not very good at differentiating one oak from the other. The ones that I really do know are white oak, scarlet oak, and uh, bur oak. I'd say that this one is a some sort of scarlet or red oak or one of those. And one of the basic ways you can tell white from red is uh, White oak will have rounded lobes, whereas red oak have these sharp needled points on the leaves. Something I look for <coughs> with this sort of oak tree, this doesn't apply to uh, white oak or some other oaks, but I look for this sort of lighter color, these like large striations that are wide and flat and a lighter color. It looks it's hard to describe, but it's like, it's got ridges, but it doesn't look too three-dimensional. It doesn't look like it's very deep. So that's how I tend to spot an oak. You know, it's, it's funny because when you learn to identify trees in the winter by the bark, it's actually, it's, it's really a useful skill because you start noticing all these subtle differences that you might not have noticed before. You know, identifying them by leaves can be quite easy because they're very different from each other. <clears throat> but identifying it by bark helps you to see these subtler differences, especially in trees that look really similar. So this tree back here is a cottonwood. And uh, one way you can tell is that it's got this rough, ridgy bark at the bottom but as you go out, it gradually smooths out. You know, at the bottom it's got these, these vertical ridges. At the top it looks more like a maple or a traditional aspen, except less pale, where it's smooth and got more horizontal striations. Of course, it's alternate branching, and uh, it's really beautiful. In the summer and in the fall, the leaves just flutter in the wind, and they, it's like glitter the way they sparkle and shine. And uh, on the older trees, the ridges are very deep, very pronounced. Um, it's, it's very obvious, in a sense, when you see cottonwood that's older. And cottonwood is a poplar, so it's got, even though it's technically a hardwood wood, the wood is softer, and a lot of people use it to make spindles and fireboards for making fire. For a hearth board, you can use either the wood or the bark, actually, from an older tree. Beautiful tree. You know, I just wanted to add, maple trees are really dear to me. As a kid, that's pretty much the only tree that was in my yard. There were a few others. But uh, more recently, in the early spring, you can tap these trees for syrup. And, and I did it for the first time this past year. 
and it's really just it's brilliant you can tap it and the sap will flow out and you can drink it and it's like this very delicious natural sweet water and of course you can boil that down to a syrup and it's just having real maple syrup that you tapped on your own is a fantastic experience another one of my favorite trees